for today's journal pages, I knew that I wanted to write some of the words that I want to keep with me throughout the year. And one of the things that I talked about was um, just seeing what the universe sends to me. That might sound vague. I don't know. Maybe I can try to explain it as things do come to me. Uh, I think you understand it, though. I've got a charcoal pencil. I knew uh, one of the things I wanted to do with this page is to make a pretty color background. And then, since we're testing the Grumbacher workable fixative, I wanted to use some things on this page to make it really pretty, but also to test this out. See what the universe brings to me. Another thing is, let's pull my sleeve back so I don't get anything on it. I think this page is dry, but, um, and maybe let's put just a few little areas of, you know, see charcoal will, will, will make a mess. And I, that's one of the reasons I'm using it. Well, first of all, it makes really pretty, um, you know, marks on the page. And then another thing I want to use to write some things out is the R2. That gives us some different colors of black wording in the background. And I know the R2 runs with water also. And we've got more layers we're going to do. So see what the universe brings to me. Let go of things you don't need or love. Gratitude is going to be really important. Self-care is, is huge, and it's something that I think about a lot, but I don't always do that like I should. So, uh, you know, I could have switched up the way I was writing this. Looking, looking at it now, I should have put this down here and that up there to have some, you know, to balance it, I guess. Let's do our little bird down here in charcoal. I Even though, okay, so the humidity might be, it might be a little too damp outside to, to test the Grumbacher. I'm going to try it anyway. It's not raining right now. Oh. You really don't want to spray this stuff inside. Everything I've read about it, first of all, it's, um, you don't want to breathe this stuff in. And... I've never used a lot of this. I'm sure there are a lot of people who don't appreciate this as far as the environment goes. I don't plan to use this all the time. My, my purpose in buying this is to figure out when it is really, really necessary or when you can really use it to bring about a result that you want. Let's go ahead and get some oil pastels out as well because they also, let's see, no, not that color. It looked a little... Not that. We want to stay. What color is that? That's pretty. And I wonder if we can find a little bit of white to go in the center of that. And I am going to go, will that blend? Yep. I'm going to go spray this. I sprayed just one layer of this fixative, and I can smell it a little bit. That was one of the things um, about this, this type of product is that it smells really strong. You don't want to spray it inside if you can help it, and it has to be ventilated. I mean, I wouldn't spray it inside at all, and I don't spray it all out through the air. I worry about the creatures too much and the environment. That said, I did spray one layer. I've let it dry, and you know, I'm not sure. We're going to find out if one layer does anything, and we're just learning. We're learning together about 
we're learning together about all of these things. You know I love my alcohol ink. I've got some black ink that I'm going to put in this uh, lid because it's a way to use it. And I'm going to paint this floral or botanical acrylic stamp with the alcohol ink. Now, alcohol ink dries so fast. You got to do this fast and who knows how this will turn out. I really need a bigger acrylic block. I didn't, didn't know this stamp was so much bigger than the block, but I think it'll be okay. Make sure that we've gone over everything. I think we have. And let's put this right down here and see if it's stamped. And it did. Maybe not as much as I wanted it to. And I'm going to have to get some ink pads that are really dark. <laughs> I have this one in front of me. That's Distress Ink. So I feel like it'll run. I know that the alcohol ink is not going to go anywhere with water. I'm sure there's an easier way to do what I just did. And we will figure that out in 2021. I have this, uh, the Carter's Black Ink. I need to find out more about that. Let's see, this really should be down here. Okay, the next thing that I want to use, thinking about putting this little bird in here as well. Let's go ahead and take this. I think I got too much in there. Okay, there's the little bird. One of the things I definitely want to use, and look at this, this glorious gift. This is one of the things that Jennifer sent to me. I am just thrilled beyond words because I love these Neo Colors. And so far, I had only ever purchased two of those for myself. I had the pink one that I use a lot. Well, I'm sure it's not called pink. It's in the burgundy family. And then I have a white one rolling around here somewhere. But we are going to, first of all, cover that. And I want to do some painting on the flowers and the bird. That one's still drying. But let's take some colors that would be really pretty here. What is this? Maybe do that for some of the stems on the flowers and do we want pink or do we want more of a let's see what color this is that's pretty i think i do like the pink that's pretty too i don't know what's up with me in orange lately so maybe let's see Some green on these stems. And even where it didn't stamp, we can kind of just imagine. And I'm not going to do a whole lot, just the least bit of color because I'm going to come back with a wet paintbrush. So this looks like it's not drying, and I think that fixative is repelling the, the water. And that's kind of, the water in the ink, that is. That's kind of what it's supposed to do. I was reading some reviews about, well, it would help to use a brush that doesn't have black ink in it. Let's get a different brush. I was reading some reviews, that's pretty, about the fixative, the Grumbacher. And uh, a couple of people did say that they sprayed their artwork and then they couldn't do anything else with it. 
and then one of the really positive reviews somebody had done a big art piece and had put it outside to dry or to cure I guess and it had been sprayed with the Grumbacher and it started raining and they forgot it was out there and then they panicked and went running out just knowing that everything had run you know all the colors had run and that had not happened the fixative had just basically repelled the water so you know I guess I'm I'm learning I, I'm trying to figure out exactly what these what these things are for these fixatives and how to use them properly and then over here I'm just gonna you can see the ink is coming off I'm just yeah I'm not sure well, it's repelling it so I'm wondering if you don't really want to use water on it after but that did okay I guess who knows let's keep learning and then for the bird don't know that I want to bring blue into this I wonder how maybe like a pretty oh hello is that that's a pretty color and I'm not going to worry actually if some of the stamp runs a little bit as well that's actually quite pretty and I think we could come back with let's use the R2 to work on that part maybe even that part and hmm not sure that I really am digging the green here So I might add a darker color, or you know what, it could be the pink. And look at that color coming right off of that. I'm going to put a little bit of brown in these. I, I love the darker color. And then maybe, we'd have to spray it again, I think. I, I really do. I think that you have to just start spraying, and that's what some of the people talked about, was that they sprayed between every layer. And I don't know that I really want to have to do that. But Amy, I love that you suggested this because one of my goals for 2020 is to just try new things. So I'm wondering if I'm on the top of that or work on the top of that. And if it'll get to what's underneath. It does feel like that's moving around. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Obviously, I need to learn a little more. At this point, I'm going to take one of my favorite stamps for putting texture or like uh, interest on a page. And I do think I want some more black for this. Maybe a little bit of black. Let's do some black up in that corner. And maybe some down in this corner. And then I know one of the things I definitely want to do to bring all of this together. I have this really pretty wrapping paper with the butterflies on it. And I know I want to put a couple of butterflies on this page. I'm just trying to figure out which ones to use. I love, let's see, let's fold this down a little bit. I do think that one is beautiful. And it has a little bit of pink in it and the browns. So I'm probably gonna go with that one. I might put two, I might only do one. Let's do the first one and just see what we think after that. I don't worry about cutting off the antennae because you can come back with a pen and draw those in, especially if you're going to go around the edge of the butterfly. And I don't know, 
I kind of was thinking I wanted a bigger butterfly than this. So let's put this one down in the corner. Okay, let's put that one down there. And There's that one. I really think I need a bigger butterfly. That was my thought from the very start. And Let's just darken up a few of these letters. And it's okay if you have scribbly lines and let's accentuate the word love. Again, it, it's adding layers, and I think I think our eyes are drawn to, to that. I know I like layers a lot. Okay, that's one of the die cuts from the Dollar Tree. And I think what I'm gonna do, ah, don't cringe, I'm gonna cut it right down the center and I'm going to glue it. I could have folded it, I guess, but I don't really want to fold it. What is the purpose of keeping a journal? Well, I know at least for me, I love going back and looking at art journals and being reminded of pages that I created and thoughts that I had words that jumped out at me, images that jumped out at me, news clippings, um, and of course there are so many kinds of journals, but they're really all just journals. I don't think anybody needs to be intimidated about knowing what to do with what. Okay, I'm gonna leave that. I've actually uh, pushed through the page there. But that's okay. That All that is is an opportunity to figure out something else. So let's find my masking tape. Oh, no, I know. Not masking tape. Paper tape. Paper tape is awesome. And it's got this, well, so is masking tape. But this has got just this beautiful, beautiful brown color, and it feels so, uh, it feels so postal and so vintage. Love it. Love the paper tape so much. So let's put this right here to repair those pages. Ah, perfect. That's definitely good. I like that. And then let's let's rethink this butterfly thing. I think we're gonna scrap this one. And you know what? I'm gonna keep these because I feel like they will be used for something else. I think I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this G. And I want numbers on the pages, so let's get this ink stamp here. And I really think. Let's just put this right here. Put a two there and the three, we'll put it down here in the corner. I'm afraid if I put them side by side up there, it's gonna look like 23. And then I'm definitely picturing some sort of mark on the page. That's pretty. Rest of the ink off of there. Put that back. I love that. You know, maybe we don't need another butterfly. But I still want another butterfly. Okay, I will be back. This is definitely more of the look that I was thinking about. Something bigger 
and something with uh, more muted colors. That said, uh, I really shouldn't have even attempted the other one because the paper was so thick. It was a die cut from, you know, like a cardstock weight. And this is just printer paper. So it's going to be a lot easier to work with. Right now, I'm just trying to figure out which one would be the best on the page. And I kind of feel like this one, for some reason, or that one, I don't know. And, you know, if you put something on a page and then don't like it, there is a wonderful trick called gesso or acrylic paint. You can go right over the top of something and cover it up, you know, end up with another layer. It's also okay that that writing at the top has a varying degrees of darkness. You know, words on vintage paper fade over time and it just, to me, it makes it a little bit more authentic. And you can take your time and do beautiful lettering or you can just write it down quickly like I did. This is a whole lot more like what I was thinking. And I feel like we just need to decide where we want it to be. I don't know that I want it right in the center and I don't want it so close to the bird. It makes more sense to me to be a little bit over the flowers and leave room for these two marks to show. So let's put some glue on the back. Oh, I forgot to grab my tacky glue when I was inside. I just went in and printed this. Your printer is definitely your friend. I love using images that I've printed, scanning old things that I have in my collection, and then printing a copy that I feel you know really comfortable comfortable about using. So let's put this. I think I actually wanted it over a little bit more. Yeah, that white paper is so much easier to work with. Now again, this this is not drying. So the Grumbacher, that fixative, is it's like it's repelling that ink. So even though we've covered some things up, I like that it gives us the sense that something was there before. Is that going to run? Yeah. Apparently I don't know that much about fixatives, but I won't be giving up, I can tell you that.